Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Spoiler warning if you've yet to see Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian, as we'll be diving into the episode. With that said, let's get into it. The dust is starting to settle following the release of the amazing Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian, titled The Jedi. The episode introduced my homegirl, Ahsoka Tano, into live action, revealed the child's name is Grogu, and provided some details on his backstory, and also teased the possibility that Grand Admiral Thrawn could appear in The Mandalorian or in another series. It was a stellar episode jam-packed with some serious revelations. But, with all the information we got, the episode also left several questions unanswered. So, let's dive into six questions left unanswered in Chapter 13, The Jedi. First, let's start with my homie Ahsoka. What has she been up to since we last saw her in the series finale of Rebels? Prior to appearing in The Mandalorian, Ahsoka last appeared in the canon timeline in the series finale of Star Wars Rebels. At the end of the episode, which flashes forward to 5 ABY, Ahsoka appeared before Sabine Wren and it was implied that Sabine and Ahsoka would be searching the galaxy for their friend, the young Jedi Padawan, Ezra Bridger. Earlier in that same episode, Ezra and Grand Admiral Thrawn aboard Thrawn's flagship, the Chimera, were pulled into lightspeed by Purgles to an unknown destination. From that point up to when Ahsoka reappears in 9 ABY in Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian, we don't know exactly what Ahsoka did during that four-year span of time. In Chapter 13, Ahsoka is not with Sabine, and we learn she's seeking information on where Thrawn is. One possibility is that Ahsoka and Sabine have spent the last four years searching for both Ezra and Thrawn, and the pair are still searching for them, but have split up to cover more ground to find their friend and the Imperial Grand Admiral. There's also the possibility that Ahsoka could have crossed paths with Luke Skywalker at some point as Luke worked to rebuild the Jedi Order. At the end of Chapter 13, she mentions that there aren't many Jedi left, alluding to the fact that she's aware of other Jedi, so Ahsoka could have spent time with Luke and or other Jedi spread out across the galaxy. Most likely, Ahsoka's time from 5 ABY to 9 ABY has been spent trying to find her friend, Ezra, as well as the Imperial Grand Admiral Thrawn and Chapter 13 has set up a Star Wars Rebel sequel series that will show Sabine and Ahsoka searching for Ezra and Thrawn. While we're discussing Thrawn, where has he been since we last saw him in the series finale of Rebels? As with Ezra, we still don't know where the Purgle took Thrawn and we don't know where the two wound up afterwards. Because of the fact that we have yet to see them appear in the Galactic Civil War in any current canon stories, there's a possibility that Ezra and Thrawn were transported to the unknown regions where they've possibly remained, leading up to a Ahsoka's appearance in The Mandalorian. If that's the case, as a Chiss, Thrawn would have knowledge of where he wound up once the Pergils came out of hyperspace. Prior to joining the Imperial Navy, Thrawn was an officer in the expansionary defense fleet for the Chiss Ascendancy, the empire of the Chiss species which was located inside the unknown regions of the galaxy. Because of the time he served as an officer in the expansionary defense fleet, he would have a vast knowledge of the unknown regions. Thrawn could have returned to the Chiss Ascendancy, or there's the possibility that he could have have joined up with the Imperial Remnant that hid in the Unknown Regions to later return as the First Order. That then raises another question, has Thrawn played a role in the buildup of the First Order in the Unknown Regions? In Legends, Thrawn was in the Unknown Regions during the Battle of Endor, returned to the galaxy in 8 ABY, and took control of the remaining Imperial forces fighting the New Republic. At this point, however, there's not much information in canon to pull from to definitively know where Thrawn's story will go. Thrawn could return to the Galactic Fold and unite the remaining Imperial forces in the Outer Rim in an attempt to oppose the New Republic. If that's the case, would Thrawn potentially align himself with Moff Gideon or oppose the Imperial Moff? Conversely, Thrawn could still be in the Unknown Regions, working to build the might of the First Order as well as the Chiss Ascendancy. Most likely, any series that Ahsoka appears in will shed some light on where Thrawn wound up after the series finale of Rebels, where he went afterwards, and what he's been up to. This then brings us to Morgan Elsbeth. Is she rebuilding a fleet for Thrawn? Moff Gideon, the First Order, or a combination of the three. During their preparation to fight Morgan Elsbeth, Ahsoka explained to Din Djarin that Elsbeth plundered and destroyed planets as she helped build the Imperial fleet for the Galactic Empire. Based on the state of Corvus, the planet where Chapter 13 takes place, coupled with the fact that she's aware of Thrawn's location, we can assume Elsbeth is again plundering worlds in an attempt to build a fleet. The HK-87 droids that we saw guarding Elsbeth have the emblem of the Seventh Fleet, which Thrawn commanded 
commanded prior to the finale of Rebels, so we can assume Elsbeth is helping rebuild a fleet for Thrawn. With that said, we'll have to wait and learn more about Thrawn's motives, intentions, and allegiances before we'll know if Elsbeth is also helping build and bolster a fleet for Moff Gideon and or the First Order. Now, let's talk about the most intriguing questions to me. Who helped Grogu escape the Jedi Temple during Order 66, and how did Grogu evade the clutches of the Empire? One of my favorite moments in Chapter 13 was when Ahsoka and Grogu telepathically communicated through the Force with one another. After their conversation, Ahsoka informs Din that the child's name is Grogu, that he was raised on Coruscant in the Grand Jedi Temple, that he was trained by many Jedi Masters, and that that someone helped Grogu escape Coruscant during the events of Order 66 and the beginning of the Jedi Purge. It would appear that a fellow Jedi Padawan or a Jedi Knight helped Grogu escape, but there's also a possibility that a non-Force sensitive could have helped Grogu escape the Jedi Temple as we know non-Force sensitives worked in the Jedi Temple. Additionally, Ahsoka also explained to Din that Grogu hid his Force abilities to evade the Empire. But, as the canon novel Ahsoka and the game Jedi Fallen Order have shown, hiding one's Force Force abilities and evading the clutches of the Empire wasn't just that simple. Grogu would have had to also constantly stay on the move to evade the Empire, especially since he's of a very rare and most likely a very Force-sensitive species. Wherever Din goes with Grogu, individuals regularly are curious about the little guy, so we can assume the same would be the case during the days of the Galactic Empire. An evader, the Inquisitorius and or Sidious received word that a being from Yoda's species lurked on a particular planet. You can bet they would have done whatever they could have to hunt him down, whether they knew he was a Jedi Padawan or not. So I think it's safe to assume that Grogu and his potential caretaker had to move from planet to planet, hiding their Force abilities, hoping to not draw the attention of the Empire and the Sith. Speaking of Jedi Fallen Order, could Cal Kestis have played a role in helping Grogu evade the Empire? How dope would that be? Lastly, that raises another question. If a Jedi Padawan or Jedi Knight helped Grogu escape, how long did they stay with Grogu and what happened to them afterwards? Because of Grogu's age, he would have needed someone to help take care of him. We can assume that whomever helped Grogu escape would be aware of this and most likely would have acted as Grogu's caretaker. Because of this, whether the individual helped Grogu escape Order 66 was a Jedi or not, they would have been a fugitive and a high priority target for the Empire. We do know that when Din found Grogu, a gang of Nyctos were in possession of the youngling on the planet Arvala 7. So it appears that Grogu separated at some point from their caretaker, whether that person died or not though, is still unknown. As the story of the Mandalorian continues to unfold, we'll most likely find out more about who Grogu's caretaker was, what happened to them, what Grogu and their caretaker did to fully evade the Empire, and how a gang of Nyctos came into possession of the youngling. As with any great chapter of a story, Chapter 13 provided just enough information to answer some burning questions fans had, but it also introduced some new questions for Star Wars fans to ponder over. And because of that, I'm clamoring for more of The Mandalorian, as well as additional shows or content that Lucasfilm has planned to flesh out the answers to some of these questions. But what do you guys think? Were there any other questions that arose after you watched Chapter 13? And do you have any thoughts on some of the questions I have? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.